Welcome to Inspiration Retreats with Shari. I am your host, Dr. Shari, and I am so delighted that yet again this week, you tuned in to Inspiration Retreats. I am so happy that you love God's Word enough to take time to listen to it, even when you're not in a church, when you're sitting at your home, or you're sitting at your desk, or you may even be on the beach, and you're listening to God's Word. God is so wonderful. He is so incredible. He is so awesome. I just love Him so much, and I thank Him for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, let's get into God's Word, but you know what we do. First of all, we have to pray. So, bow your heads with me. Most gracious and all wise God, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for yet another day. Thank you for another opportunity to proclaim your word. Father God, I ask you right now to remove every bit of shari and put you. Father God, let your words come forth so that your people are forever changed. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we bless your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you again for being here. We are going to jump right into God's Word. It will be a quick message today, but it will be a powerful message. If you would, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we will focus in on verse 9. Again, that is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And God's Word reads, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God's message for you today is God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. He says in, in 2 Corinthians here that His grace, God's grace, is sufficient for you. God's grace. God, He is sufficient in all things. And so when we have His grace, then He gives us everything that we need right in Himself, in His grace. And so let's just look at the background here or what the setting is. Paul is actually writing to the church at Corinth. He's writing a letter to them because they weren't believing some of the things that he was telling them. He is saying to them that because of what he's been through, he could glory in himself. God had taken him up to the third heaven, not to the first heaven, that's the sky that we see, or the second heaven, which are the stars in the sky, that um, space. To the third heaven, he actually went to heaven. And so he said that, Yes, he could glory in himself, but he didn't want um, the spotlight or the focus to be put on him. He wants it to be on God. He told them this just as an example so that they would know that God had given him special, special favor. Favor. God will give you special favor. All you have to do is believe in him. All you have to do is trust in his son, Jesus Christ, and he will give you visions. He will give you revelations. And this is what he had done with Paul. And so Paul was writing to this Corinthian church so that they would be encouraged. Today, God is telling us, he has given us his word. We can read his holy scriptures. We can read this epistle that Paul had written to the church at Corinth so that it gives us encouragement today. So Paul had this thorn in his flesh. That means an infirmity. He had this in his flesh, in his body, and he believed it was to keep him humble. It was to keep him so that he knew that God is the one who is keeping him. He had been with God, and so he could get prideful. He could get in his own self. And sometimes infirmities come. Things come into our lives to draw us closer to God. Knowing that God is the author and finisher of our faith, God is the one who is he doesn't create infirmities on us, but he allows them sometimes. And so Paul has said in this um, letter that he had prayed three times, three times for God to remove it. Now, if anyone else can get a prayer through, we know it was Paul could get a prayer through. But God has a plan in everything that he does. And so no matter what's going on in your life right now, Think about Brother Paul. Think about Paul who wrote more than half of the New Testament. He had an infirmity in his flesh. It was so that he knew that by his weakness, 
God was made strong. Through his weakness, he was made strong in God. God is all powerful. And so when we have God's strength, no matter what our weakness is, we are made strong. Hallelujah. So God, in his infinite wisdom, he said in that ninth verse, and God said unto me, as God said unto Paul, my grace is sufficient. That means it's okay. It's all, everything that you need. It is sufficient for thee, God's grace. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's strength is made perfect. You are perfected when you're weak. Anytime that you have enough money, you have enough brain power, you have enough strength in your body, then sometimes as humans, what ends up happening is we can get prideful. And so we get boastful or whatever. And we forget about God is the one who's actually doing it. And so this is what was happening. But God told him, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. When we as humans are weak, when we're at that point where we need God, we realize that we need God, that is when God is made strong. He stands up in us and His strength comes through us. So not in, whatever we're doing, we know that it's God who is doing it. We realize that it's not we ourselves who are doing it. Praise God. And then verse, it, it continues on saying, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Instead of glorying in other things, in the accomplishments, or even seeing the third heaven, instead of glorying in that, I'd rather glory in my infirmities. I'd rather glory in those tests and trials, because in those infirmities, God is showing up and showing out. Jesus Christ will rest. He is our rest. He is our Sabbath rest. He's seated at the right hand of God right now, resting. And all we have to do is rest in Him. All we have to do is know that He's already completed it all. All our job is, is to rest. Rest in God. Hallelujah. Now, verse 10 says, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, my brothers, my sisters, when we are weak, when we're at our weakest, that's when we're strong. All we have to do is realize that when we're weak, that Jesus Christ will get the glory. When we're weak, we realize God is the one who is in control. When we are weak and we realize that, that's when we're made strong in Jesus Christ. Now, what is grace? Grace is that unmerited favor. It's not deserving. It's not anything that you have done that you can gain it. It's from God. God loves us so much. He loves you and He loves me so much that He gives us grace. And grace is Jesus Christ. But let's look at when the first mention of grace is in the Bible, all the way back in Genesis, the sixth chapter. It only took six chapters for God to realize that men were evil. That Actually, God didn't realize it then. He knew back in the Garden of Eden. But by the time the sixth chapter rolled around, Evil, 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 evil was everywhere. It kind of reminds us of today. No matter when you turn on the news, you can be walking down the street, you can be shopping, you can be anywhere, and evil is happening all around us. But God said His grace is sufficient. Catch that today. His grace is sufficient for you and for me. In the sixth chapter of Genesis, this is when Noah, he said, let's read it together. It's the first mention in the Bible of grace. It's Genesis, the sixth chapter, the seventh verse. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Now this is God speaking. It took six chapters for God to say, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping thing 
and the fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. God said, there's evil everywhere. And so he decided to destroy man. Now look at verse 8, the first mention of grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Today are you finding grace in the eyes of the Lord? God, He loves you. And He wants you to have His grace. Receive His grace today. So, let's look at verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a man, was a just man, and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. That means he lived every day fellowshipping and having a relationship with God. He walked with God. In all of his ways, he acknowledged God, and God directed his paths. He directed his path to build an ark so that he and his family would be saved. He had given Noah a message, and he had given Noah the fortitude and the knowledge to build an ark. And so Noah, he was obedient. Hmm. Today, somebody needs to hear this so that they are obedient. Obedient to the Word of God. And do what God tells you to do. Every cubit, every foot, every meter. Everything that God tells you to do, do it exactly how He tells you to do it. And He will bless you. You will find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you walking with God? No matter what's happening in your life, you can have a body rack full of pain. You can have finances that are lean. You can have broken relationships. God's grace is sufficient. He finds strength in your weakness. All you have to do is acknowledge Him. Mm. Walk with God. Find favor with God. Noah found favor when the entire world was sinking and sinking. Washed up in sin. Noah walked with God. Walk with God. Walk with Him today. No matter what your weakness is. No matter what your infirmity is. God will give you the strength. And His grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient for you. In conclusion, God's grace. Grace is God's free and undeserved love that never quits. We can find in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. If you turn over to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And it reads for you. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, not something that you can do, lest any man should boast. Just like Paul, he said he can't glory. He can't glory in himself, but he can glory in his infirmities knowing that he is in Christ. And Christ is the one that will be glorified. So there is no need for us to boast. Nothing that we have done. It is God's grace. It's unmerited favor. It is God who loves you today. So accept his gift. Accept his gift of love. He is pouring it out onto us. He has given us his son, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross, who bled and died, who suffered bled and died on a cross for you and me so that we would have a right to eternal life. He rose on the third day with all power in his hand. And so he has given to us that power when we receive it. Why don't you receive it today? Receive the strength of Jesus Christ. Receive the strength of God today. In your weakness, there is nothing that you can do that will be greater than God's grace. So receive it today. God loves you. He wants you to be saved. Salvation is God's free love. Salvation is God's undeserved love. Salvation is the, a gift of God. Salvation is Jesus Christ. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is your invitation. All you have to do is follow this. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart. Romans 10, 9 lets us know this. Confess the Lord Jesus. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. And thou shalt be saved. Because for with the heart 
man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Save today. Salvation is yours today. You can be saved today by God's grace. Accept His Son. If you do accept Him today, say this powerful prayer with me. Most gracious and all wise God, I am a sinner. Father, I accept your Son, Jesus Christ, and everything that He did for me. I believe He died on a cross for my sins, and I receive Him today. I accept Him as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart and make me new. Father, I love you, and I love your Son, Jesus. And it's in His precious name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I am so excited for you. I am delighted. I am overjoyed for you because you are now saved. You are in the hollow of God's hand and he will protect you. He will guide you. And most of all, he will give you his grace. God bless you.